Joshua chapter 1, you could go ahead and go there. And I'm going to read the first, I think, eight, nine verses here, and then we'll get into it this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Praise the Lord. Thank you. The Bible reads like this in Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Le Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Somebody say amen. amen. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6 says, be strong and courageous because, I will, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. And I could read the rest as we go. Father, we pray your blessing. We pray your continual flow. God, your anointing is here. Your presence is here. And you know exactly what you want to do this morning. And I pray that you would have your way in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You can go ahead and be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. In South Africa, we would say, Dankiera. Dankiera. Hallelujah. In Indonesia, we would say, Puji Tuhan. Come on, somebody. In the Philippines, we would say, Marami, Marami, Salamat, Panginoon. Come on, somebody. When I came into the home, I could barely speak English. <laughs> How many know Victor Outreach will change? You have turned my life around. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's good to be here. Okay, so this morning, I really feel, again, I was always praying. I feel that this, this is the last service of the year. Uh, you're coming out of one year. You're getting ready to go into a new year. And I think that that's a very pivotal time in our journey with the Lord. And if you look here at this portion of scripture, you can see that Joshua was also in a similar time or a similar season within his life. As we read this portion of scripture, we can see that it was a time of change and transition. A time where the people of God had come to a place of leaving something behind and moving into a new season, a new time within their journey within the Lord. It was a time of leaving something behind and anticipating something ahead. And as you and I come to the end of this year, 2018, there are some things that we're leaving behind. And there's also a whole new year where we're anticipating great things from the Lord. See, this transition for Joshua came with mixed emotions. For sure, he was excited about the new opportunities that would come with his new season, but at the same time, he had his doubts and his insecurities. Was he strong enough? Was he smart enough? Was he good enough? Was he the one that would be able to bring God's people into God's promises? And I believe that as you and I step into a new season, we too can go through an emotional roller coaster where you're excited about what God can do you're looking forward to a 2019. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm looking forward to a fresh year. I'm looking forward to a, a new year with new opportunities and new experiences. And, and 2018, for me, hasn't been the worst year. I've had worse, hallelujah. But it also hasn't been the best year. It's been an up and down type of year. But I thank God that it has been a successful year, that God has used this year to prepare me for next year. I, I believe that everything I went through in 2018 has shaped me to be the man for 2019. And I, I believe that Victory Outreach San Diego, maybe you have went through a few seasons in 2018, but you got to understand that 2018 has gotten you ready for 2019. How many are ready for 2019? Come on, I said, how many are ready by faith or trust in God for a great year in 2019? And Joshua comes into this season 
It's a new season. Moses has died. He's stepping into a new responsibility. And he's going through an emotional roller coaster. He's looking at the opportunity. He's excited about this new season of life and these new opportunities that will come with it. But similar to what I was just communicating we can question ourselves and look at ourselves and, and begin to ask, am I strong enough to really experience everything that they're talking about? Am I, am I good enough to be able to see the promises that they preach about become the reality of my life? I don't know about you, I came to a time within my journey with the Lord where I was not satisfied with just hearing about breakthrough taking place from the pulpit, but I wanted to not only hear about it on Sunday, I wanted to walk in it on Monday. How many want to come to that point where what's being preached on Sunday is the reality of Monday? Come on, somebody. How many want to say, man, I, that message is my reality. That, it's not just some dream that I'm shooting for. It's something that has come to pass within my life. I believe that 2019 is going to be a time of the year where, 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 where what's being communicated and what's not only been communicated recently, but what has been communicated throughout the years, God's going to begin to allow those things to manifest into the reality of our lives that the families that have been promised to get saved the breakthroughs that have been promised to take place all of a sudden they're not just going to be a good preaching anymore but they are going to be the reality of our life i need you to clap a little bit by faith if you believe that god is able to bring things to pass he has promises that he's given to you and i but sometimes we can get ready to step into these seasons with mixed emotions excited and anticipating but also questioning and doubting am i the one or can i really see those things come to pass within my life see the first nine verses in the book of joshua you see that it's a personal conversation with god and joshua because these promises that god wanted to bring to pass for israel would be connected to joshua's ability to lead them there and before joshua could lead the people he first had to be able to lead himself. Before he could come before this massive congregation and be able to point the way and be able to lead the way, he first had to have victory within himself. And I believe before you and I will experience the breakthroughs through us, we first have to experience the breakthroughs in us. How many need a breakthrough in their own heart this morning? Come on, somebody. How many need a breakthrough in their own mind? I believe the devil has done his best to discourage God's people, but I got good news for you this morning. God's going to give you a breakthrough this morning that's going to set you up for 2019, that you're going to experience everything that God has for your life. And Joshua needed this encouragement from the Lord. So for the first nine verses of the, of the entire book is not Joshua with the people, it's God with Joshua. Nine verses is a conversation. And the, every time within that first portion of scripture, God keeps telling them, be strong and courageous. Because Joshua was feeling insecure. Joshua was feeling a little doubtful about the future that God was going to take him into. And God, every time his doubts would begin to consume him, God would say, every place you put your foot, I'm going to give that to you. The same way I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. How many know God has a way of getting personal with us and being able to speak to us? It's one thing to hear it from the pulpit, but it's another thing to hear it on your knees when you're in that that personal time with God and God is speaking to you and saying yes you are that man yes you are that woman just be strong and courageous the same way I've been with your pastor I'm gonna be with you the same way I've been with your leader I'm gonna be with you the same way I've prospered them I'm gonna prosper you the same way I've saved their family I'm gonna save your family if I brought them through I'm gonna bring you through I am a faithful God from one generation to the next I need somebody to clap a little bit if you believe that you serve a good God he's a faithful God and he knows a way to get involved in our lives to give us the personal breakthroughs necessary to be able to experience the promises 
that he has for our lives. See, before he could experience the breakthroughs and promises coming to pass in this new season, he would first need to experience breakthrough in his own heart, in his own mind. And we too, before we can experience the breakthroughs that we dream about in our families, our ministries, our communities, in our workplace, in our business life, we first must experience God's breakthrough in our own heart and our own mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. We could preach to you all day. We could spit, scream, yell, turn red, make jokes, lay hands on you, pour oil on you. Come on, somebody. Make you shake, hallelujah. Slay you in the spirit. But if you don't eventually begin to have your own conviction in your own heart that the God that I serve is a faithful God, how many know it just changes the way you walk? Come on, somebody. When you know that God is not just the God on Sunday, but he's the God right now. He's, he's with me right now. He's before me. And if he be before me, then who could be against me? And, and you walk with that type of attitude into your workplace. You, you walk with that type of attitude into your life, into your f- unsafe family and there's this confidence about you that when even though all hell is breaking out all around you there's still a sense of confidence inside of you that it may not look like it but I got a God that is on my side a God that is able to turn around all things for the good and when you have that confidence then you begin to see the promises of God come to pass within your life God has promises for 2019 But before you can walk in them, you got to get that personal breakthrough within your own heart and within your own mind. God had promises for Israel. God had promises for Joshua that he wanted to bring to pass. But before he can experience them, he had to experience his own breakthrough within his own life. There were three things that I believe God gave Joshua in this first nine verses that gave him what he needed on the inside. So he can experience the realities of God's promises on the outside. The first thing was God needed to remind Joshua that he had prepared him for this season. That this wasn't something that just fell on his lap. But everything he had been through had prepared him for this time. And his emotions. And how many know that when you get emotional or you get consumed with fear, you could forget the process that you've been through. You forget to really see who you are. I got good news. You're a lot better than you think you are. (laughs) You're a lot stronger than you feel. Come on, somebody. And God was telling Joshua in verse 1, he says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. Somebody say Moses' aid. See, God needed to remind Joshua that before you led the people, you were Moses' servant. You were Moses' aide. You were closer to Moses than anyone else. And in following Moses, you've been exposed to certain settings. You've been exposed to certain things that have prepared you for what you're about to go into. See, Joshua was experiencing a kingdom promotion. God was elevating him to a new level in his journey with the Lord. And even though Joshua always knew that this day would happen... And that this was God's plan for his life. When it actually happened, his immediate internal response was fear and insecurity. How many know normally that is? Whenever you experience a promotion, you, the first, unless you're just a proud guy, and then you think, oh, about time. It's about time they see me. Come on, somebody. You're probably going to stay in that season for a minute. Come on. But usually... When you experience some type of transition or some type of promotion, the natural reaction is, wow, am I good enough for this? I remember when they made me the regional of South Africa. That was a heavy, heavy, we were in the hotel. And I was with Pastor Sonny and all the pastors of the region. And most of these pastors have been around a long time. So when I look at my journey, I'm probably the newest when it comes to ministry and all these things. So there I am, we're in, in, the, in the hotel and we're talking and Pastor Sonny's, you know, he's dealing with us. Hallelujah. And he's, you know, he's challenging us and he's envisioning us. 
And he says, you know what? The only way this is going to happen is if I have somebody that I could work through. Uh, I need one, one person that I can work through, that I can communicate through, that understands what I'm saying. And matter of fact, you know what we're going to do? You know, Chucky. And I was surprised. I looked at him, and he, Chucky's going to be the regional. And I was like, right, Pastor Rick and, and Pastor Joe and all these. And then I'm there, and automatically I was like, oh, God, help. <laughs> I was like, I'm going down. Come on, somebody. Because you ain't around. You know that jam, right? My whole world. Come on, somebody. Right? And it matter of, I didn't feel like I was that guy. I didn't feel that I can handle that. Even though God was giving me a promotion, I didn't feel like I was worthy of that promotion. I didn't feel like I was able to handle that promotion. So before I could move in the level that God was calling me to, I first needed a breakthrough in my own heart so that I could lead at the level that God had called me to lead at. And usually when you're beginning to experience a new level of life or a new level in your journey with the Lord, the natural reaction is to feel fearful and insecure. The natural response of a human heart is, am I good enough? When you have a promotion at work, a new business opportunity, a young couple has their first baby, you're going into a new grade in school or transitioning from high school to university, you're taking on a new leadership responsibility, you're graduating the home and coming into the church, you're coming out of the UTC. The, no matter what transition you're experiencing, the first question is, can I do this? Joshua was asking himself, am I good enough to see these things come to pass? See, whenever new level, whatever new season God is about to bring a person into, usually that season comes with mixed emotions. Excitement, anticipation, but also fear and doubt. Am I smart enough? Am I good enough? Will they see through me and realize who I really am? Come on, somebody. Will I fail? Joshua's immediate response to this new opportunity in life was fear and insecurity. So God needed to remind Joshua... That before I put you in this position, you were Moses' aid. You were Moses' servant. So calm down and think about the journey I brought you on. Get control of your emotions and your thoughts and think about everything you've experienced up to this point. And I want to remind you that this isn't something that just fell on your lap. I've been preparing you for this your entire life. When you were fighting the Amalekites, I was getting you ready for this. When you went up the mountain with Moses, when he was given the commandments, I was preparing you for this. While he was in the tent and there you were next to him, I was preparing you for this. So although you may not feel ready, I want to let you know that everything you've been through has gotten you ready for this. Victory Outreach San Diego, I'm here to declare to you that you're a lot better today than you've ever been. Everything that you've been through in 2018 has prepared you for everything he's going to bring to pass in 2019 you're a little stronger now you're a little smarter now you're a little wiser now come on i need you to clap a little bit if you know that you know that you know that he's been getting you ready for this you're more ready now than you've ever been you're ready for expansion you're ready for this new season Everything you've been through to this point has prepared you for 2019. Everything. God was telling Joshua, this didn't just fall on your lap. I've been getting you ready for this. See, when I went to the Philippines, the Philippines got me ready for Indonesia. When I went to Indonesia, Indonesia got me ready for South Africa. When I came to San Diego... I didn't know what I was going into. I had no idea what was going to happen in my life. Every season prepared me for the next season. Good, bad, and ugly. Hallelujah. And I think I learned more from the ugly than I did from the good. 
So I got good news. If 2018's been ugly, come on somebody. If 2018's been a heavy season, you're more ready because you learned a little more about yourself. You learned a little bit more about the people that are around you. It's in that dark time that defines you. It's the cave that gave birth to the king, that David became a king in the cave. I got good news for you. If it's been a dark 2018, you got a good year in 2019. You're a lot stronger and a lot wiser than you've ever been. You're going to step into this new season and you're just going to know what to do. There's a capacity that God has established inside of you through every season that you've been through. This didn't just all of a sudden show up. God has been preparing you for this your entire life. As Moses' servant, you've been in different settings. And because of the settings that you've been through, you're ready for now. Now, I'm going to read this because it took me a long time. My mind's not as fast. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It says, yes, you may feel a little fearful and even doubtful, but the fear and the doubt cannot deny the fact that the things that you have been through in the past have prepared you for the season that is about to come. I'm going to say it again. Yes, you may feel a little fearful and even doubtful, but the fear and the doubt cannot deny the fact. How many thank God for facts? Come on, somebody. Not the way you feel or not how you, how you see things, but the facts are that you're more ready now than you've ever been. God has used the seasons you've been through to prepare you for the season you're going into. Your capacity is so much larger today because of the seasons that you've been through yesterday. God has prepared you. My second point is that not only did God have to tell Joshua that he had prepared him, but secondly, he needed to know, let Joshua know that he would be with him. Not only have I prepared you for this, but as you step into this, I'm going to be with you. See, Joshua 1, 3 says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. See, in our first point, God reveals that he has been prepared for the level God is taking him into. And now God is revealing to him that not only have I prepared you by your past, but I'm going to be with you in the present. I have prepared you through your past, but I will also be with you in your present. So be strong and courageous. See, Joshua's courage and confidence would be a key attribute to his ability to lead God's people into the future that was promised to them. He would have to feel a sense of security. How many know you got to have a sense of assurance? If you're always doubting, you're always... Eh, eh. And, and I'm not saying that you don't get those, that, that thought, but if you can't be assured enough to cast it down... Come on, somebody. Then everything connected to you is going to have a hard time responding to you. And the breakthrough that God wants to bring is bigger than you. There's a lot of things that are connected to you. Some of you, your children are watching you. The people in your business are, are watching you. The, 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 even the business opportunities. How many know when you get fearful, you lose your train of thought? You can't think straight. You're like, hey. You want to do it? You're, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You can't think straight. But when you have courage and confidence in the Lord, not a pride, in the Lord, then things flow a little more smooth. See, Joshua's courage would be the byproduct of a combination of these two facts. God had prepared him and that God would be with him. In other words, God was telling them there are some things that you're going to know what to do, but there are other things that you won't know what to do. And you'll have to do what, I, do what you can and trust me to do what you can. Mm. I have prepared you, but you still need faith in this next season. You're still going to need a little bit of faith of trusting God. So yes, you're stronger and yes, you're wiser, but you're still going to have seasons that challenge your ability to believe and trust God to do what you can't. So let me go here. Hallelujah. And we too must have this combination. 
confidence from knowing that God has prepared me, but courage of knowing that God is with me. You put your foot in the Jordan and I'll stop the water. You march around the walls and I'll knock them down. So Joshua was still going to be faced with challenges where he was going to have to do what he can and trust God to do what he can't. So 2019 is exciting and God has prepared us for 2019. But when you hit those seasons where you don't know exactly what to do, do what you know to do and trust him to do what he promised he would do. Put your foot in the water and God will stop it. March around the walls. I don't know about you, but I believe that Joshua said, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to happen. But God said to march around the walls. I know we look funny. I know that people might be laughing at us, but I'm just going to do exactly what he told us to do. I'm going to do what I can, and I'm going to trust him to do what I can. And in 2019, some of you are just going to have to do what he told you to do. And you might look a little funny. Come on, somebody. And, and uh, someone might be laughing at you, and some people might be mocking you, but you just keep on marching. You just keep on marching, and you keep on moving, and you keep on trusting. And on that seventh day, come on, somebody, when they went around those walls, all of a sudden, they did what they were supposed to do, and God did what he promised he would do. And those walls came down, and that city that God had promised to them became theirs. God will be with you. He's been with us in the past. The same way I've been with you year after year, I'm still with you right now. God is with us, Victory Outreach, San Diego. We got a God that's on our side. And because he is with us, he's prepared us. So we're not just going into this thing sloppy. We've been prepared for this. Come on somebody, even this expansion. This wall. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But we've been prepared for this wall. We're more ready now than we've ever been. We just got to do what he told us to do. And then watch him do what he does. And God's going to get the glory. Victory Outreach San Diego. We're going to take over this whole neighborhood. And we're going to have this property. So that more souls. More families can come into. I need you to clap a little bit. If you believe in the God that we serve. Do what you can. And trust him. To do what you can't. He is faithful to his promises. You can do what you can, and I will do what you can't. Equals courage. I'm going to do what I've been prepared to do, and I'm going to trust him to come through. How many know sometimes God don't give you all the details? Not sometimes, all the time. Hallelujah. Even getting on the plane and taking the family to a different country, I had no idea. But I'm just going. Hey, Chucky, go to Indonesia. Indo what? <laughs> Come on, I didn't even know Indo. Right? Then I get to this country, it's all Muslims. Geobobs. I didn't even know what a Muslim was. I was a meth head. <laughs> Anytime I seen that little hat, I'm like, I oh, didn't. I didn't pay attention so I know Muslim what, whatever different religion but I had no idea I was only three years saved that Muslims crucify Christians and then I get to this country had no idea where I was going come on somebody me and Pastor Rao were in the back of a taxi in the Philippines and Pastor Rao said where are you going what are you going to do and I think I'm going to Indonesia wow that's heavy <laughs> <laughs> so you know what you're going to do there I'm not sure I did what I knew come on somebody and what I knew was to find out where the dope fiends were I said where's the drug addicts at they said they're under a bridge come on somebody 
So I went under the bridge and I did what I could. I did what I knew. I testified. I said, listen, if you were a drug addict and you're tired of living that way, then, then I want you to know that I too was a drug addict and I used to get high and my father was on drugs and my mother was on drugs, but Jesus Christ changed my life and the same thing God did for me, God can do for you. I did what I knew and I trusted him to do what I couldn't do. Muslims came out from under that bridge, went into the home it's been 18 years there's still a victory outreach church in the largest muslim country in the world i met my wife in that country come on somebody i had two beautiful kids in that country but i didn't know that when i got on that plane some things you got to do what you can and trust god to do what you can't how many thank god for the faith that he gives birth to in our hearts my last point, and the musicians can make their way, is that God not only prepared him, God not only promised to be with him, but thirdly, God instructed him. And he was showing Joshua, he says in verse 7, be strong and courageous, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So when the children of Israel came to this point, they had wandered a lot longer than they were supposed to because of things that they weren't supposed to do. Their complaining spirit, their lack of faith, they're easily getting distracted by the things that were happening around them. Them getting involved in the temptations that were surrounding them. And so there were certain things that when they came to this point that they couldn't take with them. And so as we come to this time of the year, there are certain things that held us back in 2018. Certain things that we allowed ourselves to get entangled with. Certain things that maybe have damaged our heart a little bit. And maybe there's a little bit of that bitterness or a little bit of that disappointment. Maybe if you want to know where your heart's at, listen to what comes out of your mouth. Listen to what you say. Listen to the conversations that you have. It's nobody else's fault. Come on, somebody. Right? I, I've, I've been there. I've been in that, that season where my heart was a little hurt. Come on, somebody. And I can tell how hurt I was by the conversations I had. But if I was going to move into the future that God had for me, I couldn't take that heart with me. There were certain breakthrough that I needed in my heart to free me from the things that held me back. And as we come to this time of the year, there are certain things that you got to let go of. There's certain healing that God wants to bring to your heart. There's certain healing that God wants to bring to your mind because he has a new season for us. But at the same time, although there are some things that must be left behind, there are some things that can't be left behind. There are certain things that God has put in you that you have to protect in this next season. He says, everything that Moses gave you, you take that with you. So as you come into a new season, you're not starting over. You're building on next year what God has given you last year. There are certain disciplines that you've acquired. There are certain relationships that God, discipleship relationships that God has given you. There are certain principles that you've learned to establish within your life that have made you a little better, that have made you a little stronger. Those things you have to take with you. Come on, somebody. There are certain things that you got to keep. There are certain things that you got to protect. you, you got to keep that prayer life that you established in 2018. you gotta, you got to protect that intimacy with God that you, that you established in 2018. There are certain services that you were in and God gave you a breakthrough and your life was never the same you went home from that revival service and your relationship with God was in a whole nother level some of you got baptized in the Holy Spirit in 2018 and your life was never the same there are certain things that God has put in you that you got to take with you and as you go into this new season you got these things meditate on these things stay focused on these things and you will be successful and you will prosper and 
and everything you touch everywhere you put your foot everything you put your hands on God's going to prosper you Victory Outreach San Diego 2019 is your year Hallelujah 2019 2019 get that in your spirit 2019 it's going to be a great year you've been prepared for this year God has taken you through some stuff he's allowed you to learn some stuff now you're ready now it's a new season and the same way I was with Moses I'm going to be with you I will never leave you nor forsake you get it in your spirit get it in your spirit get it in your spirit I love the, where the word says, even when you were faithless, I was still faithful. Even when you were faithless, I was still faithful, for I cannot disown myself. God has been faithful. He's with us. There's certain things he's put in you. Meditate on those things. Get stronger in those things. In 2019, it's going to be a prosperous year. Lift up your hands all over this place. Oh. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Get it in your spirit. It's the last service of the year. 2018 is going to be over. 2019 is a new season. 